And while Richards ran his modest lamplighter club, other places in the area, like the Hollywood Dinner Club, owned by the Maceo brothers, were much fancier joints. They were the, uh, the leaders, the, the friendly godfathers, I would say, because they, they, they weren't like most gangsters, or they weren't at all gangsters. They weren't like most of the mafia. They were very giving. They gave a lot to the community. Their Hollywood Dinner Club was the first club air-conditioned, and it was a very posh place. Um, and then, of course, their crowning achievement, the Balinese Room. It was built in, on a pier over the water, so in order to get into the casino, you had to go through several doors, steel doors, then walk about uh, 100 yards uh, over um, uh, the, uh, the ocean. Uh, I think they had kind of a canvas cover over the, uh, that area before you got to the casino. And inside the casino, they'd have uh, like a 15-piece orchestra. When the Texas Rangers would come through the front door, the orchestra band leader was told to strike up the eyes of Texas. And when they did this, all the patriotic Texan would stand up and start singing along with it, which would block the entrance to the back room. In order to get there, if the Texas Rangers had to come through the front door, they would run and have to run all the way down this long hallway. And of course, there was no other way to get there. You couldn't go, there was no back door. It was, you know, the Gulf of Mexico. Thanks to widespread political corruption in Galveston and the almost complete control of the Maceo family, the casinos ran very smoothly for a long time. And since the only way on or off the island was by ferry or a causeway bridge, casino owners set up a system. The local police would have a patrol car or a plainclothes car on that bridge. When they saw the Texas Rangers coming, they would radio ahead and then everybody would close up with the exception of one or two clubs and they would take turns doing that so that there would be somebody to raid. Meanwhile, about 300 miles and a world away from Galveston, a young entrepreneur had opened his first joint in Fort Worth. In the year of 1930, uh, I was 18 years old and I ran a little gambling house, me and two other guys. We rented a little corner building off from a cafe in Fort Worth, Texas. And we ran gambling there. Having been born to sharecropper parents, Willie Robertson went against all the odds. At 17 years old, he left home with only $1.35 in his pocket. And within months, started running his little gambling house, the Hole in the Wall. I told my dad I knew it was a better living somewhere in the world than what we were doing. From the start, Willie enticed people with the same thing some modern casinos still use, free food. The club probably had one of the first free buffets for gamblers with Willie himself home cooking dinner every night for his patrons. His clientele was the working class of Fort Worth. Cab drivers, uh, garbage people, and uh, people were domestic workers. Fort Worth was a fair place at that time. So we had our own little cab stand, our own little gambling house, and our own little night doors all to ourselves. But the gambling houses, uh, they didn't want us to play. They raided my little joint so much, I couldn't do anything. I didn't have no job, and I couldn't get one. There just wasn't any job around. See, 29, 30, 31, pressure. That's when I had this chance to come to California. I took it. Over the next few years, Robertson owned and operated many gambling joints up and down the Pacific Coast. He later opened the Chickadee Club in Las Vegas and became the first African-American pit boss in the country at the famous Moulin Rouge. The struggles of the Great Depression drove many toward, rather than away from, a life of gambling. With Prohibition and the Depression in full swing, the climate was ideal for gambling houses, where gin mixed with the temptation of a good roll of the dice, both serving as a distraction from the awful reality outside. Prohibition was a just, just an absolutely wonderful thing for criminal elements. During this time, Sam Smith was in Houston and running a joint that catered to a slightly more affluent clientele than Robertson. His daughter remembers. Well, the Depression War was in 1929 when they were in Houston, and they really made a lot of money then. During the Depression, everybody else was broke, and we weren't. And I didn't, I didn't think that was strange, but everybody was gambling, trying to make money, so we were all doing very well during the Depression. Inez Rambo essentially grew up in a casino, 